Amen. Amen. Uh, my name is Ricky. I'm one of the pastors here. Good to be with you guys today. Um, so we started off last week uh, a series in the Psalms called Songs of the Shepherd. And Alex kicked it off with Psalm 23, just talking about how the Lord is our shepherd. And um, just to kind of let you know where we're going forward with this is so the, the Psalms, the book of Psalms is made up of different types of Psalms. And so we're going to um, have three weeks where we're going over Psalms that deal with lament um, and just through really tough times. And then there'll be three weeks where we go through Psalms of Thanksgiving and then three weeks of Psalms of talking about pointing to Jesus as the King, as the coming Messiah. And then the last week, the 10th week will be uh, a week where we kind of ask you guys, you know, hey, uh, which, which, what's your favorite Psalm that we haven't covered? Which Psalm would you like for us to go over? So it'll be the last week will just kind of be a Psalm that, that you guys pick. Um, so today we'll be in Psalm 77. So if you got a Bible, open it up. Um, and let me just read from the Psalms. So if you could stand with me as we read from Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. Selah. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old, the years long ago. I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. Then my spirit made a diligent search. Will the Lord spurn forever and never be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has, has he in anger shut up his compassion? Selah. Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I'll remember the, the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I'll remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You, with your arm, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. When the waters saw you, O oh God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightning, lightnings lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. This is the word of God. Go ahead and grab a seat. Um, so yeah, we'll be in Psalm 77. Um, when I was in high school in history class, we uh, would have this competition a day before our test. And um, we'd, you know, we'd be sitting in rows and you would basically have these board races as a row. And so uh, one person from your row would go up to the, to the board, the teacher would be in the back and he would, um, you know, as multiple choice. And he, so he'd read a question, hey, and is the answer A, da da da, B, C, or D. And uh, whichever group won the competition for the day, they would get 10 extra credit points on their test. Now. Uh, I am really good at history and smart, naturally. Um, so when the people in my row, some of the people in my row would get, be going up to the board, they would look back at me and I'd be sitting in my chair uh, listening to the question and when it would come across the, you know, if the answer was B and he would, the teacher would say the right answer, I would just kind of wiggle my pinky like this so that they knew, yep, oh, the answer is B. Um, and we would get it right and we would win. Um, so yes, I was a cheater. I was cheating. Um, but um, as this is going on, and my friend Teddy was up on uh, up there and he's looking at me, this girl in the row next to us, she, she, she turns around and she sees me go like this. And um, she looks kind of like, oh, and then she turns around and I was like, whoa, you know, oops, you know, maybe she's just appalled that I'm cheating. So I stopped, uh, but I found out later that uh, she didn't think I was cheating. She thought that I was using my finger to pick my nose and then eat it. <laughs> and uh, so once I found out this is what she thought, I went to her immediately and was like, no, 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 that's not what was happening. I was cheating. <laughs> I, you know, be, and here was the thing, because I was okay if she thought that I was a cheater, but I couldn't have her think that I was a booger eater. <laughs> um, 
And we all don't want people to think of us in a certain way. Hey, it's okay if you think of me this way. It's okay if you think of me that way. But hey, really don't think of me like that. Um, I think when it all boils down to it, we really don't want other people to think of us as weak. Um, you don't want people to see you as incompetent. That, hey, you don't really know what you're doing. You can't get the job done. You're not very good at your work. You really don't want to seem un incapable. You don't want to seem like a bad parent. That you're weak in your discipline or that, hey, you're just weak in actually um, connecting with your kids or you're weak because, man, your kids bug you. Shouldn't you be better than that? Um, for me, I don't want people to see that I'm a weak leader or that I'm a weak pastor, that I'm unsure of what I'm doing or that I don't really know my stuff, my theology. Maybe you don't want people to think that you're a bad spouse or a bad boyfriend or girlfriend because, you know, they see your flaws. They see your weaknesses that are glaring. You don't want to be thought of as weak-minded, weak in character, weak in competence, a weak character that is just incapable and not up to the task somehow. I mean, even just think in other ways, if you think of watching the Avengers, which Avenger do you want to be? be you want to be Thor? You want to be Hulk? Why? Because they're strong. You don't want to be Hawkeye or, you know, little Spider-Man's friend sitting at the computer. They're not strong. They're not the hero. We don't want to be person, people struggling in a situation or sin. Hey, if somebody comes up to you, you don't want them to see your weaknesses and your flaws and say, hey, hey, how's life going? Life is good. Hey, how's it been connecting with the Lord? How's that sin struggle? Oh, it's pretty good. How's your marriage? Oh, it's going pretty good. But really, deep down, you just are not wanting to give them any kind of information to let them know that, man, I'm in trouble. Man, life is hard, and I have these weaknesses that are in me and in my life. You don't want anyone to think of you in that way. You don't even want to think of yourself in that way. You, 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 sometimes these thoughts come up in your mind about, these struggles that you have or your weaknesses and you just think, no, 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 don't think like that. That's not positive thinking. You need to think of things in a different way and it's really the same way with God. You don't want God to think of you like that. You don't want God to think of you as weak or incapable. And can it be that your desire to not look weak or your desire to not actually be weak doesn't just hinder your relationship with others, but it's actually hindering your relationship with God from actually connecting with him, seeing more of who he is and knowing him. And so that's what we're going to be looking at today in Psalm 77. And so many of the Psalms, they're written by King David, um, who was a shepherd. That's why we called it Songs of the Shepherd. Um, but this Psalm is written by a, a guy named Asaph. And uh, there's not a ton known about him. He's a Levite. He was uh, kind of a music director and a choir director for David. Um, and he wrote 12 of the Psalms. Um, and, and we don't really actually know what prompted this particular Psalm or what's the context in here. Uh, but this is what it is. You know, just he says, I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me in the day of my trouble. I seek the Lord in the night. You know, so it, it, my hand is stretched out without wearing. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, when I think of him, I moan. And when I meditate, my spirit faints. Selah. And so right here, just in verses one through 10, we just see this, this, this thing that we get to be weak. That's just our first observation is that we get to be weak. And, and this is, is kind of maybe this community lament that they would have sung or said. But here we see this person, they're crying out to God. I cry out to God. And this is, this is not just him having a, a casual chat with God. I mean, he is crying out to God and he says, man, I'm in trouble. Man, I'm in, he, he's, he's in this time of anguish and hardship. Life stinks. And, and, and something is incredibly hard, and he's in despair. He's in anguish. I mean, again, just notice what is going on. He says, this, in the day this is happening, at night this is happening. My spirit faints. He, in verses 7 through 9, he asks God these brutally honest questions. Man, has your steadfast love, has it ceased forever? Is it over? Will it stop? I mean, do you even know how to be compassionate anymore, God? And he's, he's struggling. He's doubting God. And in verse, verse 2, he says, man, my soul, it refuses to be comforted. 
not a lot of these verses are showing up on a coffee mug. I mean, we, we, you know, we, we think of the one, these are not the ones that we're told about. Hey, rejoice in the Lord always. Those are the ones that we see in the coffee mug. Or, hey, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you. Those are what we are told. But many of us, even though these aren't on our coffee mugs, many, many of us can relate, if not all of us can relate to these verses, to what is going on. Maybe you felt this way. Just in, in trouble and in despair in your life. Maybe you felt this way when someone was sick. They had cancer. And you're just like, man, are they ever going to get any better? Maybe someone's died. Maybe you had a miscarriage. Maybe you can't get pregnant. Maybe you are, are just, there's something in your life that you just feel like, man, I just can't kick it. Maybe it's some sort of struggle with sin. Maybe it's just like, maybe it's not exactly sin. It's just this like, man, I am depressed. I am anxious all the time. And I just, man, is God ever going to give me any kind of relief? You cry out to God. You're praying and you don't get any kind of answer. It doesn't feel like God is, is saying anything to you. And you think, man, these are, these are like, I'm asking God for good things. Doesn't, doesn't God want to help in this? God, please give me a relationship. I want to be married someday. Please, God, give us a baby. Please just intervene. But nothing happens. Nothing changes. And you just feel helpless and hopeless and in despair. And I just want you, want you to notice something in here. Um, you know, in these verses, if you just kind of look at the, after uh, verse 3, after verse 9, there's this word in there, and it's Selah. And that, that just, it's kind of like this musical note almost to just say like, hey, pause, stop and think. And, and you know, stop and think about your mess. Hey, why don't you just pause and think about these doubts and this despair that you're having? And, and I'll admit, I, I, I kind of sometimes avoid the Psalms. Um, you know, they read kind of like a journal and somebody's, you know, giving you all the, these feelings that they're having. And then, you know, when, when any time something really comes that's hard, I just want to be like, oh, yeah, that was hard. Back to let's just kind of skip it. Let's just do something else. But here the 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 Psalms, you know, it's just saying, hey, why don't you just stop and think about how you're in despair here? You know, and, and to me, that just sounds terrible. I don't want to think about it. You know, but God knows what we need to do. Hey, you don't need to just breeze past your trouble. You don't need to just kind of gloss over your pain. You need to stop and you need to sit in it and you need to think about it. You need to actually acknowledge your weakness and your pain. Because when, when you actually really stop to think and acknowledge your weakness, stop to acknowledge what is going on inside of you and around you, that actually helps you to see that you desperately need God. Yeah. I mean, in ver verse 2, he says, you know, I stretch out my hand to God. And, and, and him, this, him stretching out his hand to God, this is just showing you the, the, the posture of his heart. That he's stretching out, reaching out for help. I mean, if I was on a cliff and I'm about to fall fall really far. I'm reaching out my hand. I don't care if I look stupid. I don't care if that looks weird or anything like that. I just know that I need help. I need someone to pull me up. And that's what this guy is doing. He's just reaching out. God, help me. The author is turning to God. And, and the, the Christian life isn't about pretending that everything is going great in life. We, get, we can be honest with God, with ourselves. We could come to him. And in verse, again, in verse two, he says, my soul refuses to be comforted. He doesn't want a hug. He just wants an answer. I mean, just kind of imagine this situation. This, this guy, would he would come up to his friends, and they're saying, like, hey, everything's going to be okay. Hey, this will turn out for the good. Whatever's going on, hey, God has a plan. And he just doesn't believe a word that they say. You know, so his friends, you know, keep, keep telling him. And they give him some good advice. Hey, why don't you go to God? Why don't you just look to God's goodness, look to his faithfulness. And the author, you know, is saying, hey, I've been doing that and it's not working. Yeah. I mean, verse, verse two again, he says, I sought you, I seek the Lord. Verse three, he says, when, you know, when I remember God, that's when I moan. 
When I meditate, when I'm meditating on who God is, my spirit faints. I mean, he's doing what you're kind of supposed to do. Hey, I'm, I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. Mm-hmm. But it's not working. It just, my soul is not being comforted. And, and because he's actually even thinking about who God is. Verse 5, he's, he's looking at, I consider the days of old. I consider how God used to work in the past. God used to do big, amazing things. He knows God is great. He knows God is good. He knows God is powerful. Then why isn't he doing anything? I mean, he, he used to do them in the past. But why not now? Maybe God just doesn't work like he used to. And because of that, then he just starts to ask these questions. You know, will the, Lord, will the Lord spurn me forever? Will he just ignore me forever? Will he reject me? Does God not even know how to love anymore? Does he not know how to be compassionate? So he's just crying out in desperation and in this weakness. But, but, but here's, here's the truth, is that we can be weak. We get to be weak. We, we can be messy. We can be hurt. When we come to, to God, our, our souls and our hearts to God, they don't have to be like Facebook where we just kind of show the happy times and the good things that are going on in our life. They don't, our hearts to God don't have to be like Instagram where they're edited and photoshopped. Mm-hmm. I, mean, the, I mean, the Bible just shows us this honesty that, that of what is really happening. And and we see it here in Psalm 77 and these other places that God doesn't edit a bunch of stuff out. I mean, just think of the Bible. Abraham, this the patriarch, you know, Abraham, God, you know, God comes to him, I'm gonna bless you. Abraham lies. Israel, God's chosen people, they're unfaithful. The disciples, the ones following Jesus in the flesh, they don't always get it, and then they abandon Jesus. I mean, think about it. If you and I were the ones telling the story. If we're the ones making this movie, we would be cutting some stuff out. You know, hey, hey, let's stop the cameras, stop the cameras. Cut, cut, cut. Let's go to camera B. Let's show the good stuff. You know, when we do that with our own lives and we, you know, we, hey, here's this good thing. Here's me being strong. But hey, let's edit this out. I don't like that. Hey, why don't we show me and my kids and they're being good, but hey, let's skip the part where I'm yelling at them. Hey, why don't we, you know, hey, keep the cameras rolling. I'm on a date night. Hey, but let, let's pause. Let's edit the part out where it shows me in my weakness and we're having an argument. Why don't you cut to me being content and being single and it's okay. But hey, I, I definitely don't want anyone to see that I'm lonely and I really want to find someone. Mm-hmm. Show me when I get a new job, but don't show me that I just didn't even get an interview at all. You know, and so, so show me when I'm praising God, when I'm reading his Bible, but don't show me when I'm just apathetic towards God and I'm struggling with sin or even getting an word at all. But, here, here, but God is saying to you and I, you don't have to come to me with a filtered life. Or a filtered heart. You don't have to, you don't, don't feel like you have to pick and choose what we go, get, get to go to God or when we keep the cameras rolling. And God is just telling you, don't Photoshop your life with me. Don't clean it up. Don't edit your life. Just come to me with your heart, all of you. God says, bring that mess to me. You can be weak. I actually invite you to be weak with me is what God is telling us. And isn't that the gospel? I mean, because the gospel is you are weak. I am weak. You're sinful. You're broken. You're messy. You can't be good enough. You can't save yourself. And Jesus says, hey, I came because I know that about you. I know it better than you, that you are messed up, that you are weak, that you aren't strong enough. You can't be strong enough. And I came to be that for you. I came to die in your place, pay the price for your sin. So why do you think if, if, if God knows that about us, if he knows that about you, why do you think that you have to keep pretending with him? Yeah. Amen. You don't have to be strong enough or good enough because God doesn't want that from you. God is saying, put away your filtered 
life. Put away your glossy and your cleaned up so-called Christianity or religion and just come to me. Mm -hmm. And so we get to be weak and we get to come to him in our weakness. But here's the awesome thing is he gets to be strong. Yeah. That's, the, that's just what we see in verses 10 through 20 is he gets to be strong. So verse 10, you know, so he's, he's, he's talking about all of his anguish. Then, then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. And what God is like our God? You are the God who works wonders, and you have made known your might among the peoples. You, with your arm, you rescued us, you redeemed us, your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. I mean, I mean, notice this whole time that Asaph, the author here, he's, he's, he's appealing to God over and over. I mean, in verse 1, I cry aloud to God. <clears throat> and even though it doesn't seem to be working, verse, verse 10, he, he, again, he comes back to God. He's coming back to God. And, and in, our, in our pain, in our struggles, and in our sorrow, I mean, we, where are you turning? When, th when, when you're just like so desperate, where do you turn? Hey, man, is, life is really stressful. I mean, do you, are we turning to God or are we turning to Netflix? Mm -hmm. I just need to escape. I, and, and I get that. Sometimes that, that's great. Or, I mean, I mean, sometimes we actually, hey, man, I feel so stressed out, so lonely, whatever it is. Do you actually just turn to sin? Mm -hmm. yeah. hey, you, hey, I'm feeling so stressed out and you just get back on that lustful website. Hey, life feels so crazy. Maybe you turn to control. Hey, I'll, I'll do it the way that I want to do it. Maybe you're, you're turning to get people's approval and so you get just, just overwhelmed with performing mm -hmm. and looking good. And so he turns to God and, and here in these verses of 10 through 20, they're a lot more positive. Um, and he seems to have some comfort. Now, I'll admit this actually kind of bothers me. Uh, <laughs> It is because in, in these verses, there's nothing in here that says, hey, and then God answered me and changed my circumstances. Yeah. Hey, God did something. God intervened. He doesn't say anything like that. His circumstances are the same. And, and actually, I'm bugged by that. Because I like, even though I, I don't know this ASAP guy, but I want, hey, man, I want something better for you, ASAP. It seems like this is a terrible day, terrible season in your life. And I want that for me, God. Hey, you know what the best way for you to comfort me, God? Is if you just meet me in this place and answer my prayer the way that I want you to and, and change it. Make it better, God. And I get frustrated when that doesn't happen. Because I, I really don't even want more of God. I just want more of what God's going to give me. Yeah. Get them to be the way that I want them to be, God. But, but the ultimate place where you will find strength is not going to be in your circumstances. It's not getting them to be, life to be the way that you want them to be and just getting stuff that's out there. The ultimate place that you find strength is in the Lord. I mean, Psalm 91 says that God is our refuge and safe place. Proverbs 18, his name, God's name is a mighty tower. We, and we run into it in our, in our safe and so just in these verses, you know, here in Psalm 77, notice the difference that we see in, in the first part of Psalms. You know, he says, I cry aloud. I'm, I refuse to be comforted. I groan. I am troubled. And then we see here in, in verse, verse 11, and he says, I will remember. Yes, I will remember. I mean, th this is, Asaph here is fighting to believe. He is fighting to believe in who God is. And this is not, this is not the psalmist. Like, it's not like him just in his own strength doing this. This is God giving him the strength to believe. This, this is the spirit of God working in his life to help him be comforted, help him to know who God is. I mean, in verse 4, he says, I can't speak. But he just keeps speaking. He keeps crying out to God. Verse three and six, you know, he says, I'm meditating on who God is, mm -hmm. but it's not working. Mm -hmm. But then he just keeps doing it. I'm looking to God and it's not working, but I'm just going to keep looking to God. God's giving, me this, giving him the strength to do that. He's believing because God is providing him that strength. 
but he's just looking to God. And so he's, he's starting to just, the spirit is moving in his life to help him just recall who God is and what he's done. And, and a lot of these verses are pointing to the Exodus. Hey, I'm going to remember your mighty wonders, God. I'm going to remember your deeds in the Exodus. That you, you know, the Exodus, if you're not familiar, God's people there uh, were, were, are in Egypt and they're slaves. And they'd been there for years and years. And, and then God frees them and he rescues them out of Egypt, you know, through the 10 plagues. Um, you know, let my people go and, and, you know, the whole parting of the Red Sea. And so he's in this, he's recalling what God has done. And in this, we just see God's power. I mean, verse 12, I will ponder all your work and your mighty deeds. Verse 13, um, or 14, sorry. You're, you are the God who works wonders. Um, verse 17 um, you know, talk, through 19, it talks about the parting of the Red Sea. Verse 20, you led us out through Aaron and Moses. And, and you know, I, when, when time gets really tough, when things just get really tough in life, we can just wonder, man, does God really, is really God that powerful? Yeah. Does God really have the power to change anything? Is he really in control? And I'm sure Asaph is, is just wrestling with that. And so he looks back to the Exodus. Hey, we were slaves, and God, you, by your power, you freed these slaves from the greatest empire in the world. And, and you freed us, not, and it happened not because of some great plan that we had, not because we just rose up and we found weapons and overcame them, not because Pharaoh, who is bad and oppressing us, not because you got Pharaoh out and got a new one in there with new policies. No, all of this happened just because, God, you did it. This happened by your might, your arm. We're freed, we're freed because of, God, what you did for us. And so we see God's power and we see God's compassion. Verse 15, he says, with your arm, you redeemed your people. I mean, think about it, the exodus. I mean, there, there are just millions of these slaves in, in Egypt. I mean, they're nobodies. They offer nothing to God. They bring nothing to the table. But yet God said, in my compassion, I will free you. I will rescue you. God's the one that initiated towards them. And notice that the Asaph here is not just recalling, hey, God, you did some things in the past. He's recalling who God is. God, this is who you are in your character. Verse 13, he says, your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God. This isn't just based off of actions of God. This is based off of who God is in his character. Yeah. I mean, think of people. I mean, somebody, so someday somebody could do something, you know, so, some sort of action one day, and then the next it could be co totally contrary. Yeah. You know, one day somebody could shoot you totally straight, and the next week they lie to your face. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, one day, somebody could say, hey, I'm going to be totally faithful to you and love only you, and it'll be until death do us part, the richer or poorer, and then a couple of years later, they're not faithful anymore, and you're getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. One day, somebody could have great business sense, and they're making great decisions, and the next day, they botch it. But God isn't like that. This is what Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not human, that he should lie. Not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Is he, is he like us? That doesn't even, you know, fulfill all their promises? Or, hey, I'll, I'll meet you at 12 and they're late? No, God's not like that. James 1.17 says God doesn't change like the shifting shadows. Hebrews 13.8 says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we know that circumstances will change. People will change. They will change their minds. They will not, you know, they're not completely reliable, but God doesn't change. And so when he's coming to God here and recalling, God, this is who you are. This isn't just some little thing that's like, oh, hey, that's kind of like a little warm fuzzy on the back or anything. This is God. You are this way. You don't forget. You keep your promises. We can rely on you, God, because that is who you are. Nothing, nothing will ever change that. We could be confident in you, God. We could be confident that when we cry out to you, when we come to you in prayer, that you hear us. 
I mean, notice, notice in verse 1, even though Asaph is in this time of trouble, this time of despair, all of these things, he says, I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. Not, I even hope he will hear me. Not, hey, cross my fingers, maybe God's up there. He says, God, he will hear me. A Andy Benson last week during the, during the live stream, he asked a question. Uh, and he said that his family was talking about it. He said, hey, how do we know that God is with us? How do we know that God hears us? And I love that question. Because, I mean, let's, let's just be honest. When, when life is going really bad, when something's happened that you just feel like you cannot get over, that you cannot be comforted, and you, you, you're just wondering, man, does God really hear me? Is God really with me? in this and you pray and you you ask God and maybe nothing changes your circumstances are the same maybe they actually get worse and you're just wondering man maybe God's really not listening how can he re how can we really know that God hears us how can we be confident like Asaph I when I cry out to God he will hear me I mean would you ever question if God the Father Here's Jesus the Son. Of course not, right? We would never doubt, oh man, if, if, if Jesus the Son today was you know, talking with, with God the Father, would, would God the Father ignore him or not hear him? We'd be like, oh no, hey, because, you know, hey, the Trinity, and we totally don't get it, and um, hey, but, you know, they're one, and but they're different persons, but yeah, of course they, they you know, the, son, the Father would hear the Son because they're, they're one, and if you've trusted in Jesus, then you are actually in Christ. You have this union with Christ. And so when you come to God the Father, you're not coming on your own merits. You're not coming in your own strength. You are coming in Jesus Christ. Because he is your right standing with God. He is the one that makes that communion happen for you with God. And so we, we know that we can always go to God. That he will hear us just as we can be confident that the Son and the Father hear each other. Because we're in Jesus Christ. He's adopted us. If you trust in, in Jesus Christ, he's adopted you as his son or his daughter. And if you want to know, who always has the ear of the king? It's his kids. Mm -hmm. They always get the ear of their king is, is the kids or the king's kids. And that's who we are. So we, we, we've trusted him and he's made us a son or daughter. And also we know that God always hears us because he saved us. I mean, I know that, that seems kind of tricky, but like really think about it. God, all of him, his own doing, his own plan said, I'm going to send the son, Jesus, and Jesus will live perfectly. Jesus will be completely innocent, but yet Jesus will be the one that is crucified. Jesus will be the one that is is put to death, pays the penalty for your sins. So I'm going to send him into the darkness to come rescue you and pay the price for your sin. Would it make much sense for God to do all of that, for Jesus to die for you, and then to just say the second minute, like, I don't got time for you. Hey, when you come to me for prayer, I'm just going to kind of ignore you now. That doesn't make any sense for him to abandon us later after he saved us because of his his complete grace because of the gift that he's given us yeah. and so that we know that when we pray to god that he hears us because of the cross of jesus christ and that he rose from the dead he's the one that initiated towards us he's the one that sacrificed himself for us when we're in our darkest state when we're at our worst time and when we're completely helpless and so, guys, when we read here in Psalm 77, we read this, this amazing good news that, yes, you know, that we get to be weak, that God is strong. And in this, we just see that this is good news for us today because it's telling us, hey, you don't have to be the hero. Yeah. You don't have to be strong. I mean, Captain America from all those Marvel movies, you know, when he, 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 he's in several of these movies and he's getting punched and everything. And he always says this one line. He repeats it over and over, and so he's, he's getting beat down and getting the tar just beat out of him, and then he'll pop back up, and then he'll say, I can do this all day, <laughs> right? And, we, and when, when he does that, we think, oh, man, that's awesome. That's so cool. That's heroic. That's what heroes do. 
But here we see, but you don't have to be the hero. You don't have to be the one that says, I can do this all day. Man, all of this stuff that's going on in life, this depression that I'm experiencing, this loss that I'm experiencing, this hurt that I'm experiencing, we don't have to just pop back up and say, hey, I can do this all day, just bring it on. We don't have to rely on our strength. We get to be weak because God is our strength. Jesus is our hero. He is the one that is strong because the reality is, the truth is, we are weak. And the gospel reminds us you're not saved by your strength. You're not saved because you clean yourself up. You're not saved because you are good enough, because you're smart enough, because you go to church enough, because of any of those things about us. It's totally because of God's strength for us. And so let's not believe in this Christi- like this, this kind of false Christianity that says we have to have it all together, that we have to kind of put on a happy face. And let's not present the world this type of Christianity that says, hey, this Christianity is for happy people and people that are winning at life. That is one. That's not what we have and that's not what we offer. We offer the hope of the world. Yeah. Jesus Christ, you are weak, world. You are messed up. And guess what? You don't have to change yourself. You don't have to save yourself, clean yourself up. Jesus is our hero. Jesus is the one intervening. Jesus is the one that has sacrificed himself, laid it on the line for us. So we're looking to him because God knows our weakness and he could take our doubts. He could take our frustrations. He could take our anguish and our pain. And he just says to us, hey, come to me with all of it. You can be weak because Jesus, God, will always be strong for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are our hero, that you are our strength. God, that we don't have to have this kind of photoshopped, filtered life that we edit out for others. We don't have to have that when we come to you. Lord, and thank you that you've given us this word, your your word, the, the Bible, Lord, in Psalm 77 that just says, hey, I know that you're experiencing times like this that are incredibly difficult, but keep, come to me with all of it. I'm here. I'm your strength because I know that you're weak. So, Lord, we praise you for that. And Lord, I pray that as we just even think through this, Lord, help us. If there's just somebody here today, maybe it's just like they don't know you, Lord. Help them to not trust in their strength and just give their lives to Jesus. Lord, if it's just some burden, Lord, help us to just bring that to you. Lord, because we know that you always hear us and are with us, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.